welcome back to Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Last time, we completed a very, very long and fairly tedious mission, and now, it's Andy's time. Enemy cannons, can they be destroyed? So, Andy's time is considered mission 6 of the normal campaign, but it's been moved to the early introductory phase this time. I actually think the property listings for the some of the challenge campaign missions might be wrong, because this one definitely has bases in it. And we're introduced to a character we have not seen before, but one who is incredibly popular. Meet one of the Black Hole CO's Lash. Sadly, we're not going to be facing her on this map. It's Flack again. Gotta crush him. Yeah, you don't want to get on Hawk's bad side, even though we've never really seen much of him yet. You can kind of tell he's the guy who doesn't mess around. And, uh, he's uh, still small time compared to Sturm. Oh, Flack! Flack, 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 Flack! <laughs> Flack cannons ready to go. When I first, like, played this game as a kid, I always heard this in my head as Flack, rather than Flack, 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 Flack. But now, it is Andy's time. This mission is not that bad, but it's a little different on challenge mode, and the main reason why is something a little bit of a guide dang it, let's just say. So, in challenge mode, this is the first time yet to use Andy, but uh, in normal, you will have already used Andy in cleanup before. Yeah, this is a new feature in Black Hole Rising's campaign. Yeah, you think? Come on now. See, Max actually has a really good point here. As I said in the last mission, Max is very, very good in missions where you have to destroy structures, because his bombers and, again, a unit we haven't seen yet, can one-shot them. I've got this. But let's give Andy a chance to show how much he's improved. And he can repair units even better now. <laughs> yeah, hopefully this will be a test of the new and improved Andy. The one who does know what an airport is. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting flashbacks now because he kind of said that with rivals in the first game. So yeah, this is the first mission in the normal campaign where you get to deploy units, but in the advanced ca in the uh, in the challenge campaign, you've already done that with Orange Dawn. <sighs> so that's why there's a little bit more tutorial-y dialogue here. Oh, yeah. And show, uh, show him something we will, because... Yep, Andy has an airport. This map is supposed to be your introduction to map-based structures. In the original campaign, it's just the black cannon. But here they add two mini cannons into the mix. These all function the same way, they have uh, the same amount of life and the defense of a medium tank. Now we'll explain how we deal with the cannon eventually, and that is our objective in this mission. Even if you route Flak or capture all of his bases, you do still need to destroy the cannon to win. Now this map has actually undergone a couple of subtle but significant changes in challenge mode. The biggest of which we'll see a little later, and it's one that I'm not a huge fan of because it's uh, not exactly explained. Uh, there's also another change that uh, isn't really uh, properly explained, and that's about this specific city right here. But the other big change is that Flack now has a lot of cities clustered closer to his bases, which means he'll be getting income much faster than he normally does. On normal, it's very easy to shut him down by just building recons and rushing these two bases when he only has infantry. 
But the other big change is this base right here. Now normally, you want to rush for this base with a transport copter because once you get it, you've pretty much won. In challenge mode, however, this base is in range of the cannon now. And that changes a lot. So yeah, I should probably explain how cannons work. Uh, they have range like this that you can see by holding down the B button over them. Mini cannons have a much shorter range, but they both work the same way. They will fire at the most expensive unit in their range at the start of the enemy turn. The black cannon does 5 damage that unit, the mini cannons do 3 damage. And this is map based damage just like Drake Squall, so it can't kill things. Let's talk about how Andy has changed in Black Hole Rising. He is still average at everything, his troops are still all totally neutral. And that's still a very bad thing. He has an average meter length of 3 for the normal power and 3 for the super. And his hyper repair, as his normal power, functions exactly the same way it did before, it just restores 2 HP to all units. Well, it doesn't raise firepower anymore, but that's a change that everybody got. But here is the real improvements. His superpower, Hyper Upgrade, restores 5 HP to all Andy's units. They also gain plus 20 to firepower, which is big considering that you don't normally get a 10% firepower out of powers anymore, plus 10 to defense, and plus 1 to movement range. Hyper Upgrade is insane insanely good for only 6 units of meter. And it actually makes takes Andy from average to actually mid-tier at worst, maybe even like lower high tier in terms of character. Now this does mean that Andy is almost entirely reliant on his superpower to be good. So if your opponent somehow has a way to shut down your power gain, which really isn't possible until Jewel Strike, but let's just say they did, that would hurt Andy quite a lot. He's very, very reliant on Hyper Upgrade. So okay then, I am still going to start by building a transport copter, but it's not going to rush for that base. For some reason, Flak actually doesn't prioritize going for that base, which is kind of weird. No. Here is the real issue that I have with this mission in challenge mode, because in normal mode this was a hint that the cannon could only fire once every two days, and that also changed how you uh, carried out the mission. On challenge mode, Lash is lying. The cannon will fire every day if it can. Also, Lash's dialogue here I find a little interesting. I know, I just like teasing ya. So Flag and Lash do actually have a tag affinity bonus in Jewel Strike, which implies they do get along pretty well, so Lash... <laughs> War is wasted on the gun. Also, there's this line which many people have um, <laughs> gotten kind of attached to because they're like, wait, what, Flack is profound in Reboot Camp? But I guess Flack's uh, intelligence works a little bit like his uh, luck. Sometimes he'll just say something brilliant without even realizing. But anyway, yeah, it's kind of implied that Flack and Lash are actually on pretty decent terms with each other. So yeah, I'm actually going to be rushing towards here with infantry. It isn't so much that I want this property quickly, although I do, it's more that I want as many infantry as possible in this area because here's the thing, while I am going to build some recons, Flack does eventually start spamming mechs later on. Oh uh, yeah, can you smell that? It's the scent of <sighs> impending doom. And the sniff really makes that line. <laughs> However, again, this is a lie in challenge mode. The cannon would have fired on turn one if it could. But yeah, there's a mini cannon. That's how they work. Since T-Coppers are more expensive than infantry, they can make for quite good cannon lures. Later missions are actually heavily reliant on you knowing how to bait cannons. Oh, yeah. Well, yep, Andy finally knows what strats are, so he can use them. In this case, the strat is just go for a frontal assault. The door is the cannon's weak point. 
And I'm going to borrow a joke that I used in my original Black Hole Rising playthrough back in 2014, that this thing follows the Dr. Eggman law of inventions. Everything's got to have a giant obvious weak point. I feel like Lash and Dr. Eggman would get along pretty well, honestly. Good luck. Yeah, the cannon actually looks kind of different in normal mode as well. It's got a white exterior, showing that it's still a prototype, so I guess it's a totally different kind of object. But okay, I'm going to jump uh, the infantry there and start capturing. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying was that T-copters make for quite good lures um, for the cannon, uh, and especially since the infantry inside aren't going to take damage. So the job of this T-copter is going to be to go back and forth, ferrying infantry up to the top, because infantry are going to be the main way that I deal with Flax mech spam later. However, I am going to go for an early tank this time, because I might need that. Again, in normal mode, I recommend just going full in on recons. Flack can't really do much about recons in normal, since he doesn't really get a lot of mechs. But since he has higher um, uh, income thanks to all of these cities on challenge, he will be getting a lot more dangerous stuff more quickly, and that's why I need the tank out there. However, let's start capturing this city, because it's going to be important later. And also, speaking of importance, it can be good to use la map landmarks to understand where the cannons' ranges are. For example, these cannons can't shoot to these two cities. So as long as I remain adjacent to those cities, I'm not getting shot. However, I will get shot if I go there, but again, I want to make sure this transport is moving as much as possible, as long as it doesn't get, like, outright attacked uh, by an enemy. It's not in danger from dying to the cannons. It's map-based damage, like I said. So okay. Now I'll get that tank ready to roll in. And again, I'm not focusing on that base right now. Flack is going to get distracted by these cities, and hopefully those cities are all I'll let him have. Uh, so I'm going to go another infantry, and I think I will get another recon right now. This mission is a good illustration of generally how Black Hole Rising works. You actually have, like, an early game phase to these maps. A phase where, they're, where players can only afford very cheap units. And when you're in that kind of phase, recons are pretty good. The problem is that Flack eventually does start getting mechs, as I said. And the main counter to mech spam is infantry spam. However, we're about to be introduced to another very important mechanic right now. Commander. Huh? We found a map to a lab hidden in this city. A lab where Black Hole is developing new weapons. Obviously, we'd like to track down that lab and shut it down. And... This line hints that every nation has its own hidden lab map. There is one lab map per nation, and here's another guy, dang it. It's normally made very clear where the lab maps are. Like, the enemy commander will tell you at the start of the mission, there is a lab map in this mission. The only time that is not the case is Challenge Mode Orange Star, because the lab map got moved from Max's second mission in the second half of Orange Star to this one without any real indication. It's kind of annoying. At least this city isn't too out of your way. That will change for some of the later lab maps. But yeah, I'm actually pretty sure that in the original GBA version of Black Hole Rising, the Orange Star lab was actually forced, on normal mode at least, through the tutorial. I don't think that's actually the case in Reboot Camp. You can potentially skip the Orange Star Lab mission if you want. On Hard Slash Challenge mode though, the Lab mission of Orange Star is always optional. Now, a major uh, issue about these Lab maps that I need to discuss is that in the original GBA game, if you missed a Lab map in a mission, you could not replay missions. So, you would miss your chance at getting that lamp for the entire campaign. You had to start again from the beginning if you want another shot. That is not true in Reboot Camp. Now, you can actually, uh... Yeah, you can actually replay missions. So, uh, you've got a second chance to get the lab map if you missed it the first time. Uh, I'm trying to think whether I get another tank right now. Uh... I would actually say I'll get another recon right now, because recons basically do just as much damage to mechs as tanks do, but they're a lot cheaper, so mechs are generally better against tanks on the defensive. But yeah, pretty sure you can replay lab missions in Reboot Camp, 
or at least replay the maps that are the missions that contain the lab map, so don't worry too much if you miss them. That was definitely not the case in the original GBA game. And it is kind of interesting, the Orange Star lab mission is no longer required. Uh, it used to be. And uh, there's a very good reason why you want to do the lab missions, uh, but we'll get to that later. As I said, it's important that we shut down Black Hole's new weapons development. Okay, so Flak just got an, an anti-air. Uh, which is not, uh, it's, 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 it's not the worst thing in the world because we have a tank up there, but it's going to be quite bad to infantry in this area. Uh, and like I was saying, it's quite dangerous to recons too. Uh, this is a problem because, uh, I kind of like to delay him getting more funds, but that throws away one of my recons if I do do that, and I probably will need the recons later. Another thing about, like, the early game phase of Advance Wars is that because there's a lot of cheap units exchanging damage right now, neither of us are going to be getting our powers anytime soon. As you can see, yeah, we barely have any power energy at the moment since really only infantry are taking damage. I could, however, yeah, I'll kill this thing off with a tank instead. Again, delaying Flak's uh, income a little bit. And if the anti-air does decide to attack my tank, it's going to take decent damage back. Uh, I guess this recon can go ahead and try and kill off this infantry. My 4 HP infantry is sadly not really going to be doing a lot up here. That's why I probably need to build some more and get that in there. Uh, hmm. Yeah, he's going to die if I leave him in there. I'm going to just head back a little bit. And yeah, 0%. So as always, uh, map structures have the defense of a medium tank. So... Just remember that infantry aren't really going to be doing much to them. Uh, indirects will do quite a lot of damage. Uh, and tanks and battle cops aren't going to be doing a whole lot. So really it's mostly medium tanks and... Uh, medium tanks, indirects, and actually bombers. We could potentially get bombers in this map later. Uh, for now though, yeah, I want another tank and I want more infantry for my t to the ferry up uh, into uh, the front lines. Because again... Once Flak starts mech spamming, I need to get infantry up there, because infantry are the best way to trade cost effectively with mechs. Okay, he's going for that, he's probably not going to get it, but we'll see. Yep, there we go, okay. So, this is the point where Flak does start going for mech spam, uh, and this actually did get me into a bit of trouble when I first attempted this mission. So, that's why I want as many infantry as I can up the top because the tanks are kind of zoned out right now. You don't want one tank getting first struck by two mechs. That's not going to end well. So this tank will damage this anti-air a bit to clear the way for my infantry. And now, okay, I, I only have two recons up here. Probably could have used a little bit more. I do have another t tank incoming. I could get battle copters too once his anti-air are down. Generally speaking, I find that Flak only builds like the one anti-air on this map. Usually he just goes for mechs from now on, but um, we'll see what happens. That may not end up being true. Uh, again, that's not... he's not going to get that this turn, but at the same time, I don't think there's really much risk to me doing this. Because the recon's not going to get attacked, and this also means that, again, I delay his uh, him getting income. So yeah, this is always a good thing about the early game phase of Advance Wars. You want to make sure that you are damaging your opponent's capturing infantry as much as you can. This is often referred to as interrupting captures. It's why COs like Sammy, who have a firepower bonus on infantry, are very good. Uh, and it's also why COs, um... Uh, yeah, I don't really want you to get hit by the anti-air. Why COs like Advance Wars 1 Grit, who have weak infantry, they have problems. And yeah, as you can see here, this transport can basically go back and forth and pick up an infantry per turn. And that's what I definitely want to see here. Of course, I've got to remember to refuel it later, but still. Uh, yeah, I can get some more tanks in. Not really going for battle copters just yet, but yeah, this should be fine. Most missions in Advance Wars 2 have a much more generous uh, s rank turn limit than Advance Wars 1, because you're expected to have this early game phase where you're just building up. As I said, at the very start of this playthrough, Advance Wars 2's campaign is a lot more focused on base building, and yet he's getting more mechs. So again, like, rushing in with my tanks now is not going to end well. That's why I want infantry. But I'm building up my, um, income at the moment, so now you can run up there, drop off that infantry, so now I have two infantry up the top. And again, yeah, these, these mechs, I do not want my tank to get hit, but I can kill off this thing. 
I'm really not too concerned about the power score because Flak is not going to be building very many units this mission. Uh, but if I have the tank go here, the mech isn't going to be able to hit it. I will need to go after those mechs soon, though. I mean, as tempting as that is, uh, it'll get hit by one mech. And, yeah, no, I do need to keep my infantry alive right now. And I don't really want to risk my... Re I mean, I could run the recons in and start doing a little bit of damage to the mechs. But it does mean that I effectively sacrifice them if that's the case. But is it worth it if it means I maybe get that city? I kind of wonder about that. You know what? Oh, this could potentially be not great. But I'm going to go for this. Eventually, I might even be able to just save up for a bomber and use that to go for the... Uh, for the... Um, what was called the missile? For the... Um, the cannon. Because, yeah, if I hit a few of these does mean that one of my recons likely takes a big beating, and he's probably going to replace these mechs next turn as well. But that means both those mechs get badly damaged, and you are probably not going to be that interruptible in getting that city. And now I have another tank incoming. I think I will probably get a battlecopter though right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll get a battlecopter, and then I'll get uh, another infantry, and you just make your way over to here. Eventually, you'll start getting into cannon range on this side. If you can get one of these bases, that can be good, but I highly doubt, like, you're likely to get one of those. Okay, so one of the recons is probably gonna die here. This may even be a one-shot, given tank versus recon. Mechs have the exact same firepower as tanks. Yep, that was totally a one-shot. And yeah, he has more mechs now, so I'm in a really bad position with that recon at the moment, but... I have this city, and that means I'm taking a thousand income away from him as well as giving myself a thousand. And again, so yeah, this area right now is not a very, very healthy place for tanks to be in. But if I have a whole lot of tanks rushing at once, then we might be able to clean things up. But yeah, again, infantry. Infantry are very good to have versus mechs. I suppose I can have you go in there and start capturing that. Another tank comes in, and I also have my Battlecopter, though i got to be careful about the Battlecopter in terms of the range of the cannon. Okay, yeah, that water space right there is out of range of both the mini cannon and the big cannon. So I can get that going. Again, I sort of want to pull you back right now, because if a whole bunch of mechs get the first strike on my vehicles, that's not going to end well. So, okay... Again, when the mechs start coming, I want as many infantry as I can in the vicinity, because they really help take out mechs. In fact, I might want to start repairing that one. Speaking of repairing, I may be able to get Hyper Repair off at some point. Uh, it's going to be a while before I have access to Hyper Upgrade. Can he even afford... No, there's no way, there's no way he's going to be able to afford anti-air right now. And he can only afford one mech per turn too, which is good. So yeah, I'm actually going to go for more Battlecopters, since again, he can't afford anti-air. Because Battlecopters uh, do not risk anything from getting hit by mechs. Yep, there's another mech, okay. So now, my Battlecopters can start swooping in. Again, I'm playing this a little slow and steady, but the, the S rank turn limit is fairly generous, if I'm remembering correctly. So, okay, now you can take this guy. Again, just be careful about rushing into a whole lot of full health mechs at once with tanks. This is another area where mechs actually run into some issues, because, um... Like I said, I do want to get my infantry onto those onto these mechs where possible, because infantry are... Uh, infantry are great versus mechs. Even though that looked like I came out worse, the mech is worth three times as much as the infantry. And infant, and so, like, you'll generally have a lot more infantry compared to the enemy's mechs. Uh, as, in general, it's, it's, um, always a good matchup, infantry versus mechs. Even though the tutorial doesn't really seem like it agrees, but... Yeah, okay, let's see, I can get... You... Aha, I can actually strike you from there, okay. Like, I, I don't like the fact that a few of my tanks are getting weakened, but if I do this, get rid of you... And 
The other thing is unit count. Unit count is always a big deal when it comes to like the early game. Generally, the person with a bigger unit count wins because they can do things like this, rushing in with a whole bunch of things, pitting down these enemies that won't be able to break through, and then I'll be able to just sit on these bases and stop Flak from building stuff. So, yeah. This mech spam is looking kind of shut down right now, although that recon is probably going to die, but unfortunately it is a sacrifice I am willing to make. Yeah, now you get up there, drop off even more infantry. Yes, you go a little bit further forward, and again, that is the magic tile right there in the water, where the neither of the cannons can reach. I am almost wondering, so I have... I have two battle coppers incoming. I have quite a few tanks. I have a few infantry in the area. How much is my income right now? It's 12,000. You know what? I am actually going to not build anything this turn. Actually, no, I can build one infantry. But I'm actually going to save for a bomber right now. Does he have brute force yet? Yeah, he does. I had a feeling. Okay, they do get repaired a little. Why faint when you can fight? Okay, he is going for brute force. Right. Ah. Uh... The full health mech versus my tank may be a problem. The rest of the units I'm not so worried about because luck damage is... Okay, he did go for the recon instead. I'm totally fine with that. And yeah, he kind of wasted the luck rolls here on things that were pretty much guaranteed kills anyway. Although this... The luck may influence this a little. Oh, it influences that, but in a negative way. That was almost certainly a bad roll. But, okay then. Yeah. Oh, I have hyper repair. Oh, uh, here's the problem. I really, really want to show off how good Hyper Upgrade is, but right now, I actually think Hyper Repair will benefit me more. Time for a tune -up. Hyper repair. That's the thing with Advance Wars 2. You do need to, um, consider when to use your normal power and when to use your superpower. In some cases, it is better to go for the normal power. Especially in a small income match like this, where you're not likely to end up even getting close to your superpower. I mean, I, I have seen... I have come close to a superpower eventually, but uh, it's usually been, um... Yeah, it's usually not, um... But it's usually been, like, right at the end of the match, where I pretty much won anyway, so... I think I'll go for this for now. Uh, the question is, is that gonna kill? I'm not sure if that's gonna kill. Kill. I really want to start capturing this city, but I think I'd rather just go for the guaranteed kill. Yeah, that was pretty much at full four, so I don't think I would have got this. Now, there are two full health mechs. I can get the first strike on this one via the woods. And Brute Force is going to be working a little against him now. Hmm, actually... I can start blocking off his bases. Yeah, Brute Force is going to be working against him because he gets the bad luck on his counter-attacks as well, so potentially he'll be hitting me back uh, very, very ineffectually. But yeah, because CO powers don't give any extra fire... Well, okay. Because because CO powers don't give any extra firepower by default in Advance Wars 2 as opposed to in Advance Wars 1 where they all have the 10% firepower bonus, uh, because of that... It really doesn't... For, for powers that don't explicitly increase your offense, like Hyper Repair, it doesn't really matter when in your turn you use them. So, that whole tactic the AI uses in the first game, where they deliberately hold off on their power until they can get a lot of engagements with it, that's not as necessary with somebody like Drake or Andy anymore, because now they only gain defense, so there's not really much point. It also means that if one of them gets their power in the middle of their turn, uh, it's actually gonna... Uh, there's actually no reason not to use it. But yeah, as you can see, I've pretty much got Flak locked down now. Uh, if this was uh, normal or if this was classic or casual, I probably would have uh, had him locked down earlier. But yeah, again, I've ignored this base because it's actually not that important uh, on challenge mode. What is important is this bomber. Now, unfortunately, non-max bombers don't quite one-shot cannons. That is one downside of not being max, and that's also one downside of not waiting until Hyper Upgrade, because uh, they actually would be one-shotting with Hyper Upgrade, I'm pretty sure. But still, it'll take two hits, and that should be enough to uh, get this done. 
Oh, actually, I can start capturing. So yeah, at this point, at this point, Flax basically done. He has no units and no way of building more. But uh, I will have to destroy the cannon eventually. So I'll, I'll definitely go for uh, one hit with the copter and one hit with the bomber should do it. So right now, like honestly, I don't really need any more units. <laughs> I'm just gonna build more stuff and yep <laughs> he just can't do anything at all on his turns and I'm starting to get his stuff I would say I'm in your base killing your dudes but um he has no dudes left so I can't even say that okay I am in range of uh, this in the next turn so one whack from the copter and then the bomber will do this so um, I'm just gonna get another bomber because lol And yeah, no reason to move with anything else, really. Yeah, so there's the cannon firing. It does five damage. And now I get this. Oh, actually, no, I don't quite get that, but that's fine. And then just for style points, I'll try and take this base. And then I build a medium tank out of this base, because why not? And also, this guy's going to run into cannon range, because why not? And, uh... So yeah, as you can see there, 95% base damage on structures with a with a completely neutral firepower bomber. So you do need a slight firepower bonus to have bombers one-shot structures. Max or Eagle can do it. That's what makes them really good both in this game and in Jewel Strike. And there we go. We have destroyed the cannon. You little runt. <sighs> Flack, everybody disrespects you also, yeah. <laughs> See, Flack, run. Run, Flack, run. In the normal campaign, Flack will be getting his revenge pretty quickly, but in challenge mode, that's not quite the case, because we're going to be taking a break from fighting Flack. <laughs> nice work, kid. Huh. Commander. Well, jeez, no one ordered you to broadcast it to the entire world, soldier. I love that that's fully voiced. Huh. Huh. Max is a bro, and I like that. <laughs> And this exchange, I'm pretty sure I remember being identical in the original. Yes. As I said, like, the Orange Star COs have much better dynamics with each other in Black Hole Rising, even though they get less focus. I did it! We won! Okay, that was not entirely the, the same as the, as the full quote being voiced, but still. 300 point S rank. Generally, the main key to this is that you need to shut down Flax next spam, but once you do that, it's not that bad. So, with Andy's time in the sun over, I'll see you all next time for the normal mode exclusive missions, just two of them, of the Orange Star campaign. And then, something I've promised for a very, very long time. The hard mode exclusive Orange Star missions. <laughs>